All right, welcome back everybody. In this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look uh, at the next step. So currently, um, if you've been watching the other uh, video tutorials, uh, we're at a point now where uh, we have all the dimensions that we are going to need um, in order to create our three-sided hologram pyramid. Um, and um, you can take a look at the PowerPoint. I'm kind of explaining to you, um, you know, why uh, why why you should probably move on with the three-sided hologram pyramid versus the four-sided. Uh, and it's mainly just due to uh, the actual uh, the surface size of the uh, of the, uh, the the faces of the three-sided versus the four-sided. You get much larger uh, sides to work with. And since you get much larger sides to work with than the three-sided. That means that the height of it is actually better, which increases our field of view. Okay, so we need to get some information here. Um, so this is a solid pyramid. This does us no good. We actually have no way of creating something that is transparent and smooth. Um, that can be totally solid uh, in order for uh, this hologram pyramid to work. Uh, so that means we're going to have to actually go out there and create this out of, uh, you could create this out of thin acrylic, you could use plexiglass, you could use glass itself. Uh, but the problem with those is um, even at the very thin uh, material uh, that you can get in those, which I found those at a local um, home improvement store, 0 0.093 or something was the thickness, you can use that. Uh, the problem is you have to go out there and cut it. And um, when you cut it, you're going to be using a utility knife or some way to score it. It's very, very challenging, uh, and it can be a little bit dangerous, uh, especially with the fingers in the way. So um, that was the, the first problem. The second problem um, is I actually did go out and cut this, um, and I used the actual laser uh, cutter or laser engraver to do it. Um, when I actually assembled this and used the hologram on it, the problem I got was... Um, it was reflecting actually twice off of it, so you're getting two images, and it wasn't as good as, as what it could be. Um, so I dug into my materials, and I found a bunch of old overhead transparency sheets. Uh, as you all know, overhead transparency sheets is very thin. It's about 0 .002 thickness. Uh, you can fold it. You can cut it with just you know standard scissors. Uh, it's much easier to work with, and honestly, the quality of the image is going to be so much better because of how thin it is. So that 0 .002, you don't get the double image that we got with the thicker stuff. Um, and you never would think the transparency film would be the, the winner on that, but it is. So... Anyway, so what I'm going to be doing is, is I'm going to be showing you how to use Inventor to create um, this pyramid, not as a solid, but actually at a 0 .002 thickness material like our transparency film. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Uh, the information you're going to need is this. We know that the width of this is 2.7. The, um, the actual um, distance across the front of this is going to be 3.884 inches. The height of this, if we go from this face down to this face, is going to be 1.892. Okay, so we're going to have to know what that, that uh, height is. Okay, we're also going to have to measure what this block is here on top, which is 0 0.808 by, and I think it was pretty close to 0 0.1. Yep, it's 0 0.1. So those are the uh, those are the dimensions you're going to have to know uh, moving forward. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and let's start a new IPT, but this time we're not going to be going to the standard inch IPT, which is normally what we go to. Now we're going to be going and picking on this IPT, which many of us have probably never ventured into or just got scared because it just looks very, very complex. Uh, but I think you're going to be surprised on what you can actually do with this. So, yeah, we're going to bend this up like sheet metal, even though it's going to be transparency film. So let's go ahead and create that sheet metal IPT. Let's start a 2D sketch, pick a face. And let's go out there and let's just draw a rectangle uh, pretty close to the origin. I'm first going to come out here and just put a zero dimension between, uh, oops, I'm going to put a zero dimension between the actual origin and this bottom line. I just want to keep that uh, where it should be. And now I'm going to come out here and do a vertical constraint between this midpoint of this line and the actual origin. So we're going to get that to slide over. Now I can go ahead and just start plugging in my dimensions. So we said that that was 3.884 for my overall width of this thing. Okay, and then this width over here we said was 2.7. So this is the bottom, the base of the, the pyramid. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the sketch. Okay, so now what we have to do is uh, offset a work plane. And uh, we're going to be offsetting a work plane the same distance as the actual height of this, which in this case is 1.892. So I'm going to start a 2D sketch. 
I'm going to be picking on this work plane because that's where my current sketch is at. I'm going to pick, hold, and drag that towards me. And I'm going to go ahead and just put in my distance of 1.892. I just want to verify that's correct. Yes, it is. I'm going to hit enter. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to create a rectangle down here. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and zero to this line and put in a zero dimension to get that to slide up. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a vertical constraint between this midpoint and this origin. It's going to slide it. And this guy here on top, this needs to be a distance of 0.1. And this guy over here on the side needs to have a uh, distance of 0.808. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and finish the sketch. Okay, so uh, if you've been using Inventor for a while, you can see that I'm basically basically setting this up for a loft. Um, but within sheet metal, it's not called loft. It's called lofted flange. Okay, so before we get any further, and I probably should have done this from the beginning, uh, a lot of people get a little bit discouraged uh, or become a little bit afraid of sheet metal IPTs because, well, we don't necessarily understand it because we haven't had much experience with it. So when taking a look, you can see sheet metal defaults right here. And right now, everything that's plugged in to the system is going to be calculating everything for metal thickness of 0.12. All right. And I said earlier if the transparency film is not 0.12, it's 0.002. So I'm going to come and uncheck the use thickness from rule. And I'm going to come in here and say, hey, this is 0.002. I'm going to say OK. So now everything that's going to be doing as far as bending and shearing and all that good stuff uh, is going to be for material that's 0.002 in thickness, which is the same thickness as our transparency film. OK, so now we're ready for a loft. So let's go up here and pick a lofted flange. That's what it's called in the sheet metal world. I'm going to be picking my first profile and then coming out here and picking my second profile and saying OK. And when I do that, we can see that this is open on the bottom and the top. Okay, and this thickness of material, we can go ahead and just assume is 0.002. All right, so we're heading in the right direction. At this point in time, I can see that this work plane is sort of getting in my way, so I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that. All right, so um, how this is going to work is in your hologram projector, this uh, this part back here is actually going to go against a uh, just a piece of 3 16 plywood. Um, so we actually don't have to have a, a transparency film face on this one. All right, <clears throat> so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to come out here and I'm going to pick on rip. And I'm going to go down here and find face extents. And I'm going to come right in here and come right in here to this bend. I'm going to pick on that face. You can see how everything highlights. I'm going to say OK. And now it's going to remove it. It rips it out of there. I'm going to do the same exact thing again. I'm going to come up, pick on rip, go to face extents. And I'm actually going to pick on this face. And you're going to see how it's going to remove that. All right, so I've now removed um, where those have been uh, bent or creased on those corners. All right, and now this face, I really don't need it. So I'm going to go ahead and start a 2D sketch on this face. I'm going to project geometry forward on it. It's going to give me the profile I'm looking for, and now I'm going to finish the sketch. Now what I'm going to do is jump over here to the 3D model tab, and now I'm going to come in here. I'm not going to extrude it out. It's actually going to be a cut, and the distance I want that to go in is the thickness of our transparent transparency film, which is 0.002. I'm going to say OK. So now we can see the back of that has now been removed. OK, so that leaves us with the front of that hologram pyramid. All right, so we have to have some way of it actually attaching this to our hologram uh, projector. OK, and so that means we're going to have to leave some sort of tabs that we can tape or glue. All right, so a great way to do this is just by coming out here. We're back in the sheet metal tab. Is come out here and pick on flange. Okay, now if we go ahead and pick on flange and then we come right in here to this corner or this edge right here and we select it, you can see it has given us a flange that goes out. The problem is, is that there's a plate that's underneath this, all right, and this thing is just coming up here. Uh, it's indicating that that's 90 degrees. This thing is 90 degrees to this face, all right? So we don't want it to be 90. We want that to be 45. Now, the other issue is right now that, that tab is about one inch. Uh, I'm sorry, it is one inch uh, wide. So that's a little bit overkill in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and decrease that down to a quarter of an inch and say OK. I'm now going to repeat the same process for the other two edges over here. Go to flange, pick on the edge that's closest to me. You can see it's a 45 angle, quarter of an inch for my actual width. I'm going to say OK. And now I'm going to come out here and pick on flange one more time because I'm going to come over to this edge, 45 with a quarter of an inch for my tab width, and say OK. So now we have our tabs out there to use. OK, I'm going to repeat the same process for the back because I do want that to, uh, 
I do want that to be uh, glued or taped to the back of it. So I'm going to come out here and pick on flange. I'm going to be picking on this edge that's on the top. Okay, so the problem is, is right now that 45 is still set. If I come out here and pick on 90, okay, we can see that that is going straight up and down, and we could easily go out there and tape that or glue that to the actual back plate. I'm going to now repeat the same process here for the other side. I'm going to get this edge that's closest to me, okay, and we can see it's doing the exact same thing that my other one did. I'm going to say okay. All right, so right now, uh, the thing we have to keep in mind is the way I have these set up is that the plate in which the uh, smartphone is going to be resting on is going to be basically coming right up here to the top of this pyramid. All right, so I do need to get rid of these points. So I'm going to go ahead and start a 2D sketch on one of these faces. And from this corner right here, I'm going to go ahead and draw a line. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and dimension from this line to this line and make sure that that is 45 degrees. And this is going to be a little bit ugly, but I don't care. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just take this all the way out just to make that a closed loop and finish the sketch. I am now going to come back over, jump into the 3D model tab. I'm going to do an extrusion. Okay, and I'm going to do that cut. And hopefully we are going to be able to cut this. It's just... I think we can just do an all here. Let's just do an all and say, okay. All right. So we have now chopped that corner off. Okay. So instead of repeating this process all over again, I'm hoping that we have a work plane out here. That's going to be going right down through the center of it. I think that's him right there. Let's just take a look at this again. All right. So here in this case, we can turn that on and now I can come out here. I can pick on mirror. I can go out there and find that extruded cut. Go to my mirror plane, jump on the mirror plane, say OK, and now it takes it to the other side. I'm now done with that work plane, so I can shut that down. OK, and there we go. We have our three-sided pyramid ready to use in our actual hologram projector. OK, so the last thing that you have to remember to do uh, is before we do a save, um, is I want you to come up here, go to Sheet Metal tab, and now what I want you to do is go out here and pick on Create a Flat Pattern. And it's actually going to show you the flat pattern uh, that you would be using in order to cut and bend this up in order to get what you're wanting. You have to hit Create a Flat Pattern first. Don't forget that. So now I'm going to go ahead and jump back here to go to Folded Part. I'm going to go ahead and do a save. I'm going to give this a special name. Okay, something I can remember, put it in the correct folder. I'm going to do a, uh, do a save on that. Okay, my IPT is done. All right, so the next part of this, okay, is once you have what you're looking for, is go out here and create a new IDW. And once you have your IDW, now you can go out to a base view. You can go out there and you can find that special part that we had just created a little bit ago open that up. All right. So right now saying it's a uh, half scale, I want that to be a full scale. All right. And the thing is, is right now I'm just kind of looking at the, um, the front of my actual IPT, but over here on the left, if you look underneath sheet metal view and pick on flat pattern, we can see our scale is one. We say, okay. And now that is going to give you the flat pattern that you are going to need, um, you know, in order to use as a template. All right, so I've done this a couple different ways. Um, from this point, we could simply go out here and print this as a one-to-one, -one, print off the actual paper, okay, and then take a piece of transparency sheet, put it right over the top of it, um, and then holding those together very well is go ahead and uh, just cut those out. All right, and then uh, you're pretty smart. I'm sure you can probably figure out how to bend those up. All right, what you could also do is go out there and print this on transparency film, which is uh, specially designed for uh, laser printers. Make sure it's that kind. And when you do that, you're going to be getting a, a flat pattern that has everything printed uh, directly onto a transparency film, and then you can bend that up. And when you do this, this is what you are going to be able to see. Let me just get my autofocus taken care of here. And there you go. Okay, there is your, um, there's your transparent uh, hologram projector pyramid. So this is one designed for a five and a half inch uh, display for a uh, iPhone 6 Plus. Um, but if you go ahead and you come back um, 
and use these video tutorials, you can simply go out there and start plugging in the information that you're going to need to know in order to find the scale factor um, for a different size uh, screen. So just keep that in mind. All right, so there you are. That is it. That is uh, how you, um, that's how you go out there and sort of solve for everything that you're going to need to know um, for uh, creating a three-sided hologram pyramid.